Hello, hello, hello. We are officially on Facebook. Welcome to the Get Fit With Me Expanding Your Physical and Mental Fitness group. This group is for individuals who are ready to expand both their physical and mental fitness while helping and supporting others with similar goals all along the way. So for those of you who are watching on Facebook, drop hashtag live or replay, whether you're watching the replay later on or you're actually here with us now, let us know, let us know who you are, where you're from, and are you outside or are you on some piece of cardio equipment? Because today is a movement workshop. We are going to be moving for 30 full minutes. And usually when we do these, I will either teach something or I'll share something Today, I have a list of like 20 fun fitness facts that I found. Um, some of our ones that I've known in the past and others are ones that I've looked up. So I'm going to share some of those with you guys today as we are on this call. But for those of you who missed the beginning, this is a movement workshop. Every other week, we do a movement workshop where we actually learn a technique, learn a piece of equipment. We learn how to implement it, whether it's stretches or movements. And we've had some really good feedback that people want 30 minutes of just moving together as a group. So this is our once a month lace up your shoes and move. It is a little chilly outside. And when I do this outside, I can't stream into Facebook for all of those who are watching live. So I am on my spin bike. That's why if you see a little bit of bouncing with the camera, I'm trying not to move my legs too fast, trying to keep it nice and steady for you guys but you can do this from anywhere. If you have a treadmill, go get on your treadmill. If you have an elliptical, a rower, a bike, whatever that is, maybe you're just gonna pace around the house for the next 30 minutes. Maybe you're gonna bundle up and get outside or you're somewhere warm where you can be outside and you're just enjoying it. You choose what type of movement you are going to do for the next 30 minutes. We're gonna end the call at 1230 because I like to stick to that, 12, to that 30 minute time slot that I tell you guys about. So we will be done in less than 30 minutes now because it's been a few minutes. But throughout this time, we're going to have some conversation based on some fun facts, um, things that you can start to incorporate. I want you guys to have a place to listen to something, learn something while getting that movement in. I know often, I know this I, happens to me when I stretch, is I feel like when I'm stretching, I could be doing other things, more productive. So if you guys feel that way when you just move for 30 minutes, I want this to be something where you guys learn you have something to take away. So remember, let me know who you are, where you're from, and what type of cardio you are currently doing. And we'll move into some fun facts. And yes, I'm going to be reading off some sticky notes because I could not have all of these memorized no matter how much I practiced. So fun fact number one. It takes the body six to eight weeks to adapt to an exercise program. And some of these, I will have a backstory on why I'm sharing them and others, I'll just say them and I'll move on. But this was a really good one to remember. So I know there's a handful of you guys who've jumped into this group recently because you're in that beginning stages. You're like, I don't really know what to do. I don't really know what to eat. Um, I'm, I'm not seeing the results I want as quickly. And I want you guys to remember that it is a long game. You will probably see some very quick results right away, but to see the results you actually want to see, you're not, it's going to take at least six to eight weeks for your body to start to adapt, for your form to start to feel really good for those awkward movements. I know there's been times where I've had a a few of you of my clients, we're doing a weird lunge that you've never done before. It feels awkward. But after six to eight weeks, our bodies learn to adapt and it feels more natural. And we will see more results at that point. So remember, change does not happen instantly. It takes time. Fun fact number two, rest days are a must. I have talked to a lot of you about this. And for those of you who I haven't, I do rest days. I strength train two to three times a week. And then I do cardio two to three times. Sometimes I'll do a cardio and a strength training on the same day. Sometimes they'll be opposites, but I at least have one full rest day, but usually I have two. And my one full rest day still includes most of the time me going out for just a short walk. I'm not moving fast. It's something like this, where it's just really light, getting the muscles moving, 
getting our bodies moving, but it's not strenuous. I can have a really good conversation with the person next to me. I don't feel out of breath, but I'm still moving my body. That's still considered a rest day. A rest day isn't where you have to just lay on the couch and do nothing. A rest day can be really light movement, such as a walk or the pace that I'm going on the bike right now, I have no resistance on. And all I'm doing is working on my core activation and just sitting here pedaling. So today is actually one of my rest days and I'm using this as my 30 minutes of movement because even on those rest days that are a must because we can't lift weights seven days a week. We can't run a bunch of miles seven days a week. It's not good for our bodies. Our bodies need time to recover. That something like this is just perfect to get the muscles moving, to get the joints moving and get us feeling good, get those endorphins up, but is not putting too much impact or pressure on the body. So rest days, super important. Make sure you have at least one rest day a week. And if you don't right now, make sure you add one in. I'm more than happy to help you with any of that. Um, but mine are usually Thursdays and Sundays. I really like Sundays as being a rest day lately. Fun fact number three, people who don't exercise regularly could lose up to 80% of their muscle mass by age 65. So when I read this one, I didn't realize that the percentage was so high that up to, you could lose up to 80% of your muscle mass, but it makes sense. If we're not using it, we're going to lose it. And as we age, our bodies already tend to become a little less strong, tend to break down a little bit more. We've probably all seen that or we know somebody in our family who is on that course. But if we can stay consistent with our movement, our resistance training, our mobility and flexibility, we won't end up losing that muscle mass compared to if we don't do that. So a lot of us are waiting for that perfect time to get started. Oh, perfect time, let's start now. That's not... There's never going to be a perfect time. You have to just start. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to be fun. And you're probably not going to feel great in the beginning. I know when I take periods off and I get back into it, I feel like I feel tired. I feel like I just feel like my body doesn't want to move the right way. And you may be feeling that and that's okay. But the more you can stay consistent with it and start now when you are uncomfortable, the easier it's going to become. So often we wait till that perfect time or we wait till we're like, oh, until I get this dialed and I'm not going to start this. Our body needs movement no matter where we are at on this journey. So if you can start incorporating that movement, that resistance training, even that just that body weight training, your body is going to thank you and it's going to help you in the long run as we start to age. Number four, I believe. Did you know that exercise has an antidepressant effect? So if you have ever had any sort of symptoms of kind of being down or depression or anything along there, and you've never done exercise, I really suggest you moving. And most doctors you'll talk to are going to suggest the same thing. When we exercise, it gives our body a happy and an uplifting feeling that when we are feeling down, it's super important to just get out and move. Even if it's the most light thing in the world, like walking to the mailbox and back, that fresh air, that movement in our body is so helpful for our mental state. And being a business owner, I know that there's a lot of balls floating around all the time. So if I don't prioritize my movement, I can't show up here for you guys as well because I'm in a different space. I'm not mentally there and aware. So the movement helps me in all areas of my life. So if you're someone who struggles a little bit with some depression or just kind of feeling sad and lonely, get out and move. Movement is medicine. I've been hearing that a lot lately and I want you guys to remember that in all capacities. You don't have to be high level performing at all. Just move, move just like this. Get outside and move or jump in with us and move. Next one we have. I found this one interesting when I looked this up. It says, when you stand, you burn an average of 100 to 200 calories an hour. First, when you sit, 
when you sit, you burn an average of 60 to 130 calories an hour. So for any of you guys who have a standing desk or you have a sitting desk, you, I fluctuate. I go from standing for an hour, hour and a half to then sitting for a little bit. Like today is a huge call day for me. I'm on with a lot of clients. So I'm going to stand the majority of that. But when I have office work, I'll sit down because it's good to do the ups and the downs and the movement because you can be stationary sitting or you can be stationary standing. You want that up and down movement. But if you were to stand, you are going to burn more calories than if you were to sit. Your, your core has got to be supported. Your body's got to be a little bit more engaged when we stand to hold us up. Versus when we're sitting, we tend to let everything relax a little bit more. We come a little bit more hunched over. We start to feel a little bit more achiness in that lower back. So making sure that you're getting that variety between standing and sitting is just super important throughout the day. And if you don't have a stand desk, you're like, well, how do I go about that? Well, what you can do is make sure that top of each hour or every half hour, you've got to come up with a system that works best for you. But taking some time to take a lap around the office, to take a lap around the house, go outside, walk the driveway for a lap. Figure out what works best for you and get that movement in because what that's going to do is you're going to burn a few more calories that way. You're going to feel better. Your endorphins are going to start to increase that even just five minutes of pacing around the house, you're going to feel better and you're going to be less lethargic because we've all probably felt at one point sitting in front of the computer, our eyes get really heavy. We start to hunch over. We're thinking, ooh, that couch upstairs, or I'm really tired. All of these things start to set in. And I definitely feel it if I do too much sitting in the day. That's why my stand, my sit stand desk is perfect, but I didn't always have that. So those laps around the house and that movement is really important. And if you guys have any input on these as I'm going through them, you're like, oh, that, that's the cool one, or didn't think about this. So drop them in the comments, let me know. Um, you guys probably also have some fun facts of your own and share them, drop them, share them away. I'll post these in the comments when I'm done. I'll type them up so you guys can kind of see some of the ones I talked about. And if there's one that stands out to you and you're like, oh, can I learn more about that? Or can we learn how to incorporate some of this because I'm dealing with this? Let me know. I'm here to help. So this is an interesting one. And too much cardio can actually prevent fat loss. Your body will adapt, which will eventually encourage your body to hold on to excess weight and they can leave your body starving for fuel. And when I was training for my first 25K, I did not realize that's what was happening. I was not doing any strength training. I was just doing cardio. I was doing like the five days of running a week, essentially with my two rest days. And I was noticing that my weight was either staying the same or it was actually going up. And yes, I was eating more because I was burning those calories, but it should have been balancing itself out. Well, after learning and doing another 25K and a half, I noticed that when I started to incorporate that strength training, my weight stayed more of the same and even decreased because it wasn't my body wasn't just hanging on to that excess weight because it wasn't sure when it was going to get the next meal. You wasn't sure what you were going to do. So it just kept hanging on and my body adapted to all that cardio. So speaking to all of you cardio people who do no strength training at all or no resistance training, if you are seeing a plateau right now, you need to start incorporating some strength training and some resistance training. It is super important for multiple aspects of your body, but making sure that you get it in even if it's just 15 minutes every, every other day, getting that resistance and that strength training in is super important to help get us through some of those plateaus. And I've had the conversation with a handful of you recently about that. So let's make sure we're getting that strength training in. And if you are someone who's strength training and doing cardio and you're still at a plateau, it could be your resistance and your cardio intensity needs to go up or down or that your strength training weights need to go up or down. If you're doing the same exact thing every single day, your body's gonna adapt and it's gonna know what's happening. So change it up, add some more weight, decrease the weight, 
do some different resistance in that cardio. Like when I bike, I don't bike the same pace all the time. We do different types of intervals, the, the intensity, the incline, all of those things change, allowing the body to change along with it. We've been going for 15 minutes. You just have 15 more minutes of workout. So this is for all of you moms out there, moms and dads, parents who model exercise regularly, encourage children to lead a healthy lifestyle. I know a handful of you guys have joined because you want to model a healthy lifestyle for your little ones. You either have really little ones now, or you have some teenagers and you still want to model what healthy balance is, what a healthy lifestyle looks like. And that's becoming more and more common to do that. I felt like when I was little, that wasn't a thing that was like home cooked meals was modeled, but we never really modeled like, okay, making sure you go out and you get X amount of exercise. Like it was talked about and it was modeled, but it wasn't something that I felt like was talked about all the time. Now I hear it more commonly. I want to do this for my little ones. I want them to see that they can start working out and moving when they're young, they can start doing these things. And I want to be a good example for them. So with that being the case, if you are a parent who wants that, for them to get the best results, you need to model it for them. So that's out taking walks every day. If you want that to be something that is instilled in them, make sure you show it to them. Same thing when it comes to eating. Are you eating your vegetables? Are you eating your fruits? Or are you just giving it to them? Um, I know I was talking to somebody and they were like, yeah, I don't like vegetables, but I make my kids eat them. Well, if you eat them, they may be more enticed to want to eat them because mom and dad are eating them. So if you think about how much kids play off of us to begin with, our healthy habits also play into that. So make sure you show up at, in a healthy lifestyle how you want to, and your kids will start to see that and you'll be modeling that for them. And it will be easier as they get older. Next fact, even just short bouts of exercise can drastically improve your mood. So like I said, if you're sitting in front of the desk and all of a sudden you're starting to feel really tired, get up, do 10 jumping jacks. Super short burst, even if it's only a minute or two, it's going to increase that mood and it's going to increase your productivity. I know there's a lot of companies out there and I worked with a few of them where they'll do movement challenges and the movement challenges are not just for when the employees are outside of the office on their personal time, but it's for when they're in the office, they're encouraging their employees to get up and move, to go do something, to take a walk, to communicate with others outside of their cubicle. And it's a little bit different now because there are still a lot of companies that are in that virtual world and you guys are all at home, but I've known some companies that, that will do very similar to what we are currently doing here. Hey, let's get on at noon. Everyone get outside. Let's walk for 10 minutes. Just kind of walk together as a group or they'll do group chats of, hey, this is my picture. I'm out moving right now in the middle of the day, getting my fresh air, coming back to crush the meeting that's coming up. Short bursts doesn't even have to be a long, does not have to be long at all, like two minutes is going to get that heart rate up, endorphins going, it's going to increase your productivity and your mood. And who doesn't want that? Just a little, little burst. Listening to music can help you move faster and improve the quality of your workouts. You guys have probably all done some sort of movement, whether it's a walk, a group fitness class, you've gone to the gym and we've done the, oh, darn it, I forgot my headphones. And when we do that, I automatically in my head think, oh, this workout's just not gonna be as good. And that's not necessarily the case. But when we do remember those headphones and we get into a spot of in our own zone, whatever music we listen to, I listen to country music when I work out, people think, how could you ever listen to that? That's so slow. But it's what brings me joy when I work out and it makes me want to work harder. So listening to something, whether it's music, podcast, a book, something that gets you in the zone, gets you motivated, is going to get you working a little bit harder. It's going to allow you to usually work out a little bit longer. If I don't have music, I tend to slack off my workouts a little bit. Same as if you're in a group fitness class, if you've ever taken a class and there's no music, 
the class probably feels like it drags on and on and on. Whereas if there's music and people are talking and you can feel the energy in the group go up, class is going to fly by, the workout's going to feel great, and it's not going to feel like work. So when you're doing your own stuff, and even if it's just something light where you're spinning like this or you're out and about on a walk, whatever it may be, put some music in. Anytime those headphones die in me, I'm always so bummed because the music is so helpful. Music is a big part of a lot of our lives. And let's incorporate in the exercise portion, or sometimes I don't want to listen to music and I listen to a podcast. So find something to listen to because it gets us moving a little bit more and a little bit faster. It gets us feeling a little bit better. Which then leads us into working out in a group setting can improve your performance as opposed to working out alone. Workout buddies are a huge thing or accountability partners is we want that we all have that little bit of competitive edge in us, even if we don't feel like we are. Um, it's funny. I had two best friends that I grew up running with um, when we started to run our first 25 K and one of them, both of us wanted, we didn't want to be a step behind the other. So at one point we all of a sudden realized we were running very fast. <laughs> we're like, why are you running so fast? Well, we could, we both needed to slow down. We just wanted that. We didn't want to be a step behind the other person, which our speed increased. And then after a certain amount of time, we both looked at each other and said, okay, we need to slow down and not be so competitive against it. But there is that competitive factor that does play into it. And that's good. Hey, did you do X, Y, and Z? Oh no, I didn't do that. I need to go do that now. Accountability partners are working out as a group. The camaraderie that comes with that is so important, especially when we're starting out and we just can't get into the groove. We're struggling to find the motivation, the consistency, the dedication that when you have others around you that are doing the same things that are on the same track you are, or at least a similar track, it makes it easier. And this journey is not easy and you got to do it the long haul because it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. And if you have those around you who are supportive in that way, it's going to be a little bit easier. You're going to have that support on those days when you don't want to do it. Hey, nope, we actually go need, we committed to walking Tuesday at one. We need to get out and walk Tuesday at one. We have just a few more minutes and just a few more facts. Regular exercise helps lower blood pressure and cholesterol levels, which are the two major risk factors of heart disease. Heart disease, obesity are things that kill Americans all the time, every single day. But unless it's affected by you or you know somebody who struggles with it, it probably doesn't cross your mind that a reason to exercise is to avoid having heart disease or is to avoid dying of obesity and all the other chronic factors that come with it. So making sure that you exercise regularly and if you have any pre-existing conditions, especially in your family, if you're like, oh, my family has died of heart attacks for the last 10 years. Like if you know that about your family history, that exercise and that healthy diet are super, super important to help make sure that you do not fall into that. Some of it is genetics, but some of it is also preventable if we do the right things. For any of you who are bad sleepers, who struggle to either fall asleep, stay asleep, or even just sleep all in one length of time, maybe you're someone who gets up a lot in the night, adding workouts or daily movement is going to help you sleep better. I sleep like a rock. I move, I move just about every single day, except for that one rest day where I probably don't do anything but lay on the couch. Um, and I sleep like a rock. There's those few nights where I don't, and there's other factors that play in. But every day that I move, whether it's light movement or a really heavy workout, I feel better and I sleep better. My head hits the pillow and I am out. I'm out usually within three or four minutes. And when I wake up, sometimes I pop right up and I'm ready to go. Others, it feels like work to get out of bed. But I sleep all night long. And I really think a lot of that has to do with my movement throughout the day because I move, I make myself tired enough that when nighttime comes, I'm ready to go to bed and I'm ready to stay asleep the whole night. Working out increases your productivity, 
which I already said, and it increases the number of endorphins that are released. So the reason our productivity is increased is because the number of endorphins that we create while exercising increases. So the more movement you have, the more endorphins you create, the more productivity you have in the long run. And who doesn't want to be more productive? Maybe you don't. I, I always want to be more productive, but thinking of a spend in those days that are really long. We have really long days at work. We have lots of meetings. What can we do in between those meetings to allow us to feel more productive, be more aware, be more present in those conversations? Because if we're not, we're not present, we're not fully paying attention, we're missing things, and we're usually not going to hit those next milestones as quickly as if we were, if we were moving and exercising and helping our body out in that way. And the last fact that I have here for you is exercising regularly helps boost your immune system. You are less likely to get sick than people who don't exercise. And I can attest to this. I ended up with a little bit of congestion this week. Could be the fact that I was with kiddos this weekend. Could be the fact that we've had this crazy temperature change. But I was telling my friend who's also a trainer out in Washington, shout out Danielle, that if if I did not move my body how I did, if I did not eat the balanced meals like I did, if I did not do the right things, drink my water, get the good sleep, this little congestion that I felt for 48 hours max would last so much longer. My cold, since I've become super consistent with my water, my exercise, my diet, my sleep, my when I get sick, the length of sickness I has has shortened drastically. And I am very grateful for that. And it doesn't knock me out like it used to. I remember I was in high school and I had laryngitis and bronchitis at the same time. And I felt like it knocked me out forever. But now if I were to get something, I feel like my body can handle it and tackle it better. So I'm not saying you're not going to get sick because we get sick. We're humans. But I'm saying that the length of time and the severity of it may not be as intense if you implement your healthy diet, your water, good sleep quality and quantity, and good movement. It is all important. And the last thing that I like to share, because somebody shared this with me, a reason why they are working out is to limit the amount of medication they have to have as they're older. I know people in their 80s who take no medication at all, and that's who I want to be like. I know people in their 80s who have pill, pill jars up the wazoo because of the lifestyles that they've lived prior. So for somebody who is not in their 80s yet, such as myself, and for almost all of you who are in this group, think about what are you doing now so that when you age, you're not as achy, you're on less medication. All of these things that happen as we age, what can you still do? I have an 80 year old that still washes her floors on her hands and knees. I wanna be able to do that. Think about these things that as we move, yes, they're doing so much for us in the physical moment of us moving. They're doing a lot for us in the rest of the day, but it's building to create stronger bodies, stronger minds as we age and get older. So we are coming up here on our 30 minutes. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you had any questions about any of these facts, or if you're like, ha, I, didn't, mm -mm, I don't believe that one, or you're like, oh, I really liked that one. What's a, I have this fun fact I want to share. Drop them in the comments. Remember this chat lives on. And if you're listening to the podcast version of this and you come up with anything along the way, shoot me a message. I want to hear what's come up for you throughout this walk as you're walking and listening. Last little thing is drop your insights and takeaways. How would you feel at the start of this move, 30 minutes of movement versus the end? And what did you get out of today's call? I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday and I will talk to you guys all next time, next week. It is not a movement workshop. So be on the lookout. We are talking about meal prepping for breakfast and how we can create healthy breakfast for, our, for ourselves. I will talk to you guys next time.